September 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from the New Testament. Finally, pray for us, brothers and sisters, that the Lord's message may spread quickly and be honored as in fact it was among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and evil people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. And we are confident about you in the Lord, that you are both doing and will do what we are commanding. Now may the Lord direct your hearts toward the love of God and the endurance of Christ. But we command you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from any brother who lives an undisciplined life and not according to the tradition they received from us. For you know yourselves how you must imitate us, because we did not behave without discipline among you, and we did not eat anyone's food without pain. Instead, in toil and drudgery, we worked night and day in order not to burden any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give ourselves as an example for you to imitate. For even when we were with you, we used to give you this command, If anyone is not willing to work, neither should he eat. For we hear that some among you are living an undisciplined life, not doing their own work but meddling in the work of others. Now such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and so provide their own food to eat. But you, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary in doing what is right. But if anyone does not obey our message through this letter, take note of him and do not associate closely with him so that he may be ashamed. Yet do not regard him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way. The Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand, which is how I write in every letter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. God, I'm pretty much the perfect parent. <laughs> Aren't all people who don't have kids perfect at that? Or so we think. But one thing I definitely do know, and uh, this was definitely solidified uh, getting to work with the youth at, at church, a lot of people nowadays don't understand what discipline is. And discipline comes in a lot of forms, from parent to child, um, from church to parishioner, as Paul's talking about, even discipline from you down to us. And when done the right way, discipline is done out of love for ultimate reconciliation, reconciliation away from the sin, reconciliation of a relationship. Um, I think about all the, all the discipline that I've been through with you, all very deserved. And all of it was done out of love and so I was able to safely, that's like the best word I can use, safely work on the sin without fearing that I was just going to get beat down and beat down and beat down. And I knew that I needed to reconcile that relationship. I had gone away from you. And I knew because you did the disciplining out of love um, that there was still that open door there. And I think about Paul talking about this, that... First and foremost, we are to go to our fellow brother and sister in Christ and admonish them as our brother or sister, uh, but not regard them as an enemy. Always leave that door open. Always do it out of love and that opportunity for reconciliation. And I think, <laughs> especially in light of uh, recent events within the last year of my life, I think about how many people out there are afraid to do this afraid to discipline their children because my child won't like me then we won't be friends afraid to discipline within the church because I, I don't want to cause trouble um, I'd rather you know they just figure it out on their own with God um, and what I always said to parents this is where my perfect parenting <laughs> comes in I always said to the parents how much do you love your child oh I love them more than anything else do you love them enough to discipline them? And amazingly, sometimes the answer was no. Astoundingly, no, it wasn't. And for a variety of reasons. And holy cow, I could never uh, 
put myself in their shoes because I have no idea what it's like to actually live with a teenager. Uh, so I've got to, I definitely give them tons of grace for that. But I do know how discipline needs to work. Discipline needs to happen because we all work with boundaries. We all work <laughs> really well with boundaries. It's, it's however you hardwired us. Uh, and we like to know what we can and can't do. Um, and we always push that envelope, but we like to know what we can and can't do. And we really are attracted to having boundaries in place. Um, we love it at work when the boss says, I need you to show up at 10 o'clock and I need you to leave at six o'clock because then we know when we need to go to work. <laughs> or even if the boss says, I need you to make your own hours. Great, I'll work from 10 to six. But what if there were no rules at work and you just showed up whenever? So we really gravitate. Can you imagine driving without rules? So we really gravitate towards these rules, these guidelines of what we can and can't do in all different aspects of our life with our relationship with you, our relationship with other people, uh, how we exist here on this, on this planet. And part of our responsibility that you command us to is to love our neighbor as ourself. And if we truly love them, then we would be willing to go to them out of love and say, I need to talk to you about something. I've been talking to God about it a lot. I've been in prayer a lot about this lately. And I have a question about something that I saw you do or something you said or uh, a, a specific type of action that you always do. Whatever that, that is, but if we go to them out of love and then support and encourage and, and hold them up while they work on that sin, then that relationship can be resolved at the end. And they can be stronger for the kingdom of God if that situation is fixed, if that sin situation is fixed. And that's, that's exactly what Paul's talking about. God, I just pray for people to have the strength and courage to do what you've called them to do, to love people enough to love them when it's easy, to love them when it's hard, and to love them when they need to discipline somebody. Whether that's within the church or within relationships or within a family, um, you love us enough to discipline us. <laughs> I am, it's hard sometimes going through some of the discipline, but I'm so incredibly thankful. Um, you discipline me to teach me how to be a better Christian here on earth so that I glorify you in the right way. It's crazy awesome that you love me that much, that you want my life to be better. You want me to be a better Christian for you. It's astounding to me. God, allow us to, to all have that much love for everyone else, that we disciple them, but we can also discipline them when that happens, and if we're on the receiving end of discipline, to understand that it comes out of love, to not instantly get agitated and push back and uh, get angry that someone is p pointing out something that we very much know exists in our lives, that that sin exists in our lives, um, that we know that that message is coming to us out of love, and with you we can work on it, and just like Paul's telling the Thessalonians, as long as, as we, as Paul puts it, direct our hearts toward the love that you have for us, God, then that endurance, that strength will come from you to persevere. God, thank you for, for loving us enough to give us commands and rules and structures to live within. Thank you for loving us enough to discipline us when we go outside those boundaries. Sometimes it's intentional, and I always know when I do those. Um, Sometimes it's not intentional. Sometimes it's these small little degrees that suddenly we find ourselves outside of those. And I just thank you so much, not only for your discipline, but the fact that I have people in my lives that hold me accountable to those areas of my life to help kind of shoo me back into <laughs> to what it is I'm supposed to be doing and get me back on track so that I can do everything I can for you while I'm here on earth. In your son's name I pray. Amen.